3SFX presents the Hindu Podcast with your host, T. Sterling Watson. Good morning, Indubians. I'm T. Sterling Watson. And I'm Courtney. This is the Indu Podcast, where drive time meets late night talk show as we aim to aim. Wow. As we aim to entertain, enlighten, and provide an auditory escape with knowledge and nonsense. Thank you for stopping by and pressing play. We're recording live from the little new Indubia on the corner of Tachaka and MLK Drive in the brand new studio here in on the second floor of that location I just gave you. But Courtney, hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? Apparently just a tad bit rusty because uh, I don't know, the whole <laughs> month long break kind of, you know, missed up my words a little bit. Yeah, you got to get back on the what is it? Get back on the saddle, get back on the saddle. That's the that's the saying, right? I think so. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And okay, the well, saddle, I am, right, right. I'm I am on the saddle. The saddle is a little I mean, it's it's worn. I, I tried to put something <laughs> soft to make it a little softer for my, sure, my sure. you know, comfort. Your bum. But um, yeah, yeah. But like I tried to say in my intro, I am in a new location. That is the reason why we went on hiatus because not to move the whole studio, but I, I moved my entire life uh, mm -hmm. across the city. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, we moved. We moved across the uh, this lovely city that we live in and I was debating whether or not giving a review of my previous establishment. And I think it's fair to say, and I even discussed it with my father today of all people that I'm on the verge of like a two out of five stars because they did actually send me an email to ask me how I thought of my stay there. Really? Wow. And, are, yeah. and you are going to give them the truth. Yes. I mean, of course, and I wanted to give them a honest review. I mean, they weren't asking me for a written detailed like, yeah, I moved in December 2020 and, you know, all that. They weren't asking for that. Just out of five stars. How was your stay for the last three years? So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So an exit interview, if you will. Exactly that. Yes. Exit interview. My dad called in an, an exit survey. I mean, they're all the same thing. Yeah. And yeah. he's completely... He's completely correct. He thought that my two stars was a little too high <laughs> based <laughs> on, uh, you know, all the things that have yeah, happened, which I'm sure. You, yes, it's quite a quite yeah. a few things. So, yeah. Um, but but I mean. I don't know. I don't know why I feel like I'm coming on the defensive and like there was some good things about it, but I mean, sure. What I really want to say is that if it's your first time ever getting an apartment, mm -hmm. maybe this might be your introductory kind of place, perhaps. Sure. So. Okay. So yeah. you would still um, kind of recommend that place, though, even for a first timer? If it's a last resort, <laughs> which it was for me, because yeah. I couldn't find anywhere else. And then they were like, hey, yeah. we got a place. We have a we have a, a unit available. You need to take it like now or else we're not going to have it much longer. So I'm like, OK. And I you know went with it. And it yeah. wasn't until maybe a couple of years later that I, I think I went through maybe Yelp and some other places, even Google. They all, mm -hmm. you know, they do reviews. That's what they're good for. And yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of negative reviews. And then there's a handful of like very few seldom positive reviews and i'm like where were you living so right maybe that was so, several years ago or something or they're writing from the future maybe but not currently <laughs> yeah they were they were fairly recent like I, I i thought about trying to track them down like let me see your unit like let me oh that came out weird but let me see like you know where you're living <laughs> and um, yeah see the difference but I'm also thinking maybe they're just an an old person living by themselves. Maybe they live like on the third floor, so I don't have to worry about hearing people below them or above them. Rather, yeah. I don't. I yeah, don't know. I don't know. But yeah. I'm I'm thinking maybe for a more in depth review of my former uh, location, I will probably save that for the Love Blurs, which will be returning as well. And 
Ashley and I can kind of talk about it because I know she's not going to hold back at all. She will definitely <laughs> say how she feels 100%. So, well, how's the new place treating you? The new tr- the new place is lovely. I do the only I'm only going to start with the downside right off the bat and that's the second floor. That's we we have to traverse, we have to climb, we have to mm. hike up a number of steps to get to mm-hmm. our home. But once we're once we're here, it's like how you and I we would talk about like yeah, once you're your home, like if you don't really have anywhere else to go, you, you need like several reasons to leave the house again because I'm like Oh, I got to come up these stairs again. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's you know, the stairs. And I really only make that hesitation and that sigh because of the moving process, which is a beast. Yeah. And stairs, yeah. Would, yeah. Especially. <laughs> I was told it is the second worst thing that we as people have to deal with in our life. So. Yeah. What's the first worst like, thing? What's the first? Yeah. Um, public speaking? No, that's not the first. Um, I think it's the fear, the second biggest fear. The first thing would be, um, <laughs> I feel like I know the answer. I, I just want to get the answer right. But that's what that's why I'm hesitating. And I think it's a paper cut. I think. <laughs> okay. I wasn't expecting that, but yeah, I think you're also lying at this point. I'm lying. I feel like you're lying. I feel like you just made oh, that well, up. Because I don't want to get too graphic. Because if I like said specifically where the paper cut was, then like, ooh, see, even right now, not even oh. saying what it is. Yeah, see, see, now your mind Ew. is starting to wander. Well, now I'm just and, ugh, filling yeah, in see? the blanks. And maybe the worst, worst way. thing you asked me what the worst thing was. I told you a paper cut. <laughs> and now well, I guess I had to, you know, give you a dot, 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 you know, in a yeah. location that may not. And see, I'll, and shame on you and you two in Dubian listening right now. Get your mind out of the gutter because I don't even know what you're thinking. But it's probably paper not cut good, anywhere, It's not good. I mean, where I'm thinking, it's not good. And if yeah. you know anything about me and when it comes to like body horror movies, which I really try to avoid most mm-hmm. of the time, anything that has to do with the oculus, I will, you know, I need to turn away. <laughs> so <laughs> putting those two things together, you now can Ugh. see where I'm going with all of that. So that's disgusting. That's Let's move thing. on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, the moving process, uh, we did it very, very quickly. Basically, just by the time we were done, just throwing things in boxes, like whatever, we'll figure it out when we get there. And even after we got here, we're still like, what are we going to do with this stuff? So I've been in my house for about five years now, and I still have unpacked boxes. So Mm. you're in good company. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I was told that you're never really done packing until you finish your last box. So I guess you're not done yet or you're not fully moved in. Yeah, guess I'm not fully moved in. <laughs> That's not. I'll I mean, that, where are you though. going? <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, how you pack up stuff and it's not really important stuff. It's stuff that maybe like needs to be purged anyway. And then it's mm-hmm. still in boxes because you can't get to it or it's not that important or whatever. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I'll eventually get rid of it. We'll see. Maybe not. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like I'm I'm bearing a lead here because everything, you know, the the whole move, everything worked out great except the fact that my couch doesn't fit in the living room. So, Ooh, yikes. So we yeah, we have currently what we now uh, affectionately call a kitchen couch. So, <laughs> it's in the kitchen, but, but but the kitchen is very very big. We have a very big kitchen. And now it's sort of like a lounge kind of because we got the dinner Mm -hmm. table. So we'll go eat there. And then should we like, hey, let's all hang out on the couch because it's, you know, me, Ken, Ashley, and then the dog will all just like plop down on the couch and finish watching Mm -hmm. whatever we're watching when we're eating dinner. So, you know, it's it's cozy. It's nice. And then if we have guests over, they can come hang out on the couch. It's a family room because everyone, yeah, they migrate to the kitchen anyway. So 
just hang out in the kitchen. It's all good. Nice. Yeah. Kitchen couch. Yes. It works out. Yeah. So the the living room um has shelving or shelves. We we've started setting things up, but it's hard to really put the living room together without a couch because that's yeah. just like that's like the 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 main ingredient. That is your your steak on your plate. And mm -hmm. yeah, so right now we have a very vegan living room because we don't have any steak. <laughs> so gotcha. Mm -hmm. I'm just vegan throwing analogies room. and all this. You're yeah. Throwing them out everywhere. I know, I know. It's also currently this week my office for work because I'm just working from home this week. So mm -hmm. it's nice because I, I got plants. I showed you pictures earlier today and you you were like, oh, or, or I think it was yesterday, but still. Yeah. It's nice. Recently-ish. Yeah. Recently-ish. Yes. Yes. So yeah, the move, it was, like I said, it was a beast. Uh, we did hire movers and I will, I'll be circling back to this whole move because it was a large event. It was the reason why mm -hmm. we went on hiatus for mm -hmm. well, a month. <laughs> And yeah. Uh, yeah, we're 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 in. We're we're getting settled. We still got a few more things to unpack. I, yeah, it's it's good. It's good. Good, good. I'm I'm glad y'all made the move, and I'm glad that it was mostly smooth. Hopefully, is what you'll report. But mm -hmm. I, yeah, moving is not a fun. Well, it can be a really unpleasant, stressful thing, and um. I'm glad that y'all made it out on the other side pretty okay. So, thank you, thank you, and I do appreciate you wishing to help if you were able to. I know you would. <laughs> I definitely know. Uh, yes, but yeah, you're just a just a a, 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 a squeam well, too far. Yeah, just a just a squeam too far. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I would have helped and volunteered my spouse to help as well. So, <laughs> two helpers, of course. Of course. Of course you would. I knew that was mm -hmm. the other part of it because mm -hmm. you wouldn't be working alone. Never. So, yeah. And how how have you been? I have been pretty good. Just, you know, living life, doing this and that, trying not to melt on these ridiculously hot days we've been having. It's actually a cooler day today. And it's like, wow, is it fall already? Because we had a day that didn't, I don't believe it got above 85 today, which is wild. Like, mm -hmm. it's not going to last but a couple of days, but I'm going to take it. So, so yeah. Were you that's, able that's to spend life. some Just, time outside in that? Not really. Um, I would like to, though. So I think I'm going to go out and... And a little bit once it once the sun continues to set and maybe just hang out outside just because I can. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it was it's nice to like even walk in my house, which is air conditioning air conditioned, but it's not like the the AC is fighting against like crazy hot weather outside. So it's mm -hmm. walking in the house and it's just nice and cool and it's just oh, great. This is great. And then we've got some clouds rolling in. So it's going to get even cooler. Oh, just, just, it's the little things in life, you know? Oh, absolutely. I do. I, we are experiencing some rainy weather today. So it, it definitely cooled down. Not that it was hot, but that coolness that you're, you're discussing, it's, mm -hmm. it's been nice. I'm like, Ooh, this mm -hmm. is a nice little, yeah, right here. A little respite. And, Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, the weather is, uh, pleasant, very pleasant. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. glad it's pleasant for you too. I do know it hasn't been that way across the nation, but yeah. we are not a news podcast or a weather podcast, yeah. even though we like talking about the weather. But, yeah. <laughs> it's part so, of our daily lives. We gotta, we gotta put it in there every now and then. We, we do, we do. So, for those that are struggling in the heat, trust me, we feel you, we understand. That's why we're taking this moment to just, just cool, just blow a cool breeze on you, just to <laughs> ah remember how that feels. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. It's and stay back. I it, yeah yeah it is. But please stay hydrated and um, seek shade wherever possible because yes. sunny ain't, ain't no joke. Ain't no joke. Correct. Now there have been quite a few things that have happened whilst we were away. Granted. 
we weren't like under a rock, so we knew a lot of stuff that was happening and we were actually conversing a lot of, about of it, a lot of mm-hmm. about it. Good Lord, words are hard. <laughs> um, so rather than just kind of hang out and wait till we get into the the meat, you know what? I'm, I'm going to prolong it a little bit longer because I want to go ahead first and talk about the writer's actor strike update just to get that in mm-hmm. the way because we mm-hmm. here at the Indu podcast support the writers and the actors and especially mm-hmm. the writers and their fight for, I was going to say equality, but it's really just for better living standards yeah, of living. Livable. And, uh, yeah. Livable wages, wages, healthcare, and healthcare, yeah. um, don't let the AI take over all of those things, yeah. but mostly all the, of living things. wealth. Yes. Yeah. So as of today, dates to be redacted because <laughs> you know have to have some error mystery but they had a update on deadline which is where i kind of find a lot of my information regarding the strike updates mm-hmm. i pulled one uh one paragraph out just to kind of read it but i'm going to summarize basically what's been happening up until this day because they okay. have gone into talks or at least the uh oh my goodness i keep forgetting their stupid long um uh an, an acronym name um movies tv production people mtpa yeah amta oh yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i don't know the Wait, acronym of that i know what you're talking about though i yeah um See, this is why I did have this open. Where did it go? I was prepared. I, I swear that I was. I believe anyway. you. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Amped. That's it. It only had one bottle in it. A-M-P-T-P. Ooh, breaking news. That wasn't there before. But they're meeting this uh-huh. afternoon. So, okay, okay, I will break down the wall then. Today is the 15th. But they're meeting today. I thought they were going to meet on Friday, unless they met last Friday. But they're trying to still negotiate. And, and I'm glad that they're coming back to the table to talk about things. And they want to start with the writers because if they can get the writers, you know, they come to a deal and the writers can get back mm-hmm. to work, then mm-hmm. they can have scripts written while they're talking over with the actors. So then by the time the actors, hopefully they get everything situated, situated. they can, yeah. yeah, they can all get to work. So that makes sense. However, yeah, sort of. I'm saying, however, because I'm trying to get to this paragraph over here, see broadcast television, which arguably arguably provides the best living for rank and file writers and actors with year round employment. We're talking about your 23 or 22 episodes per season broadcast TV Mm -hmm. shows, full Mm -hmm. size writer rooms, the ability for writers to get on set producing experience and writers and actors to get generous residuals is the Mm -hmm. most impacted by the strikes. Further mm-hmm. pushing broadcast live action scripted series to ex- extension with fewer broadcast repeats and declining cable sy- cable syndication. Most network series rely increasingly on streaming for the afterlife, making streaming residuals a key issue in the contract negotiations important for broadcast writing and acting talent. So I just wanted to get that out there just to kind of, again, mm-hmm. in case anyone is confused or doesn't know exactly what they're striking about. It's because of things like this. And again, they're not being paid fairly. We're not talking about the big actors or big time writers and things like uh, Aaron Sorkin or or Brad yeah. Pitt. I'm talking about the people who work in the right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Little guys who make a big difference, who might come up with yeah. that that one joke that really makes it punch or yeah. script doctors and all of these people. They're very, very important. And Yes, we don't want them replaced by AI, and we want them to, like we said earlier, get paid a fair, livable wage and have health care mm-hmm. and be able to do what they need to do. Yeah. Every day. So They deserve it. They deserve it. So I just wanted to throw that in there, that they are still working hard, and the fact that we're getting closer to Labor Day means that if deals are not reached by then, then it's possible that whatever they if they do come to a deal later on past labor day they might just scrap whatever tv season that they've been writing for or whatever tv show Ah. that the networks have they're gonna have to wait until Mm -hmm. 2024 to let it out or they'll have super super short 
seasons of whatever yeah. show. Yeah. The other issue <sighs> at hand is whatever mm-hmm. new show that maybe just came out like this last year or mm-hmm. or even this past year. Mm-hmm. If it's in season one, it may not come back for season two. Mm-hmm. Or be very hard for it to. Yeah. If if it's what's considered a bubble show, meaning it's the ratings have either fallen off or it could be canceled, it could be renewed, but they're not sure yet. It could yeah. ultimately be canceled. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it's really kind of iffy right now on what's going to happen next because, I mean, hey, can we can we make a deal so we don't have to lose some really good shows, some really good work, actors, yeah, and people trying to make a living, just trying to make a living. Do you can yeah. you can you remind us how long the the strikes have been going? The writers and the actors strikes have been going on now. Do you do you have that? Yes, because they're both different. Yeah. Um, the whoops, the writer strike has been well. It's already passed. Let's see the hundred day mark six days ago. So I guess it's one hundred and six days for the okay. um for the. The writer. writer strike, yes. Mm-hmm. And as for the actors, that'd be a good running count to have. Um, why is that one harder to find? Because they keep telling me the writers, like I know, I know, I found that one. When did they start? Like they started. <laughs> now they make me do math. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. It was a good question that I wish that I had prepared. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, it's definitely less than 100 because they start a little later. Yeah, they did. And I can't remember if it was like a month later or uh, maybe just a couple weeks. I, I can't remember. Time is weird. It was, and wibbly it was about a month later. It, it has That's been very wibbly thinking. wobbly. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's definitely been wibbly wobbly for me because I've been working at home and I woke up this morning thinking it was Wednesday and it's not Wednesday oh. yet. Bless your heart. But no, I cannot find an exact number on the what day it is. And there's probably a website that will just like, hey, uh, writer strike day number 50 or something. I yeah. Know. Or not like writers. Count or, the, or the actors maybe. But uh, yeah, I just was curious that I think it was about a month later because I know... There was <clears throat> there was talk about the actors going on strike as well, uh, <clears throat> but that that wasn't put into place for uh, I know several weeks the writers were on strike um, before the actors joined them officially, mm-hmm. and so um, I was just curious. But I, I'm good with estimating a month <laughs> before the actors joined the strike officially. Mm-hmm. So we'll say that. The writers have been on strike over three months, which is mm. which correlates to the hundred days. So maybe two mm-hmm. months then for the actors. Yeah, yeah, I'm so, good with that yeah, estimation. Yeah. It's definitely a work stoppage, and so far I've only heard of um, oh my goodness, now his name is I had his name on the tip of my tongue all day, Billy <laughs> Porter. There it is, Billy Porter. He mm. had did he said that his. He would have to sell his house because he can't afford to live there anymore because mm. he's not getting paid for anything. Wow. And it's wow. It's like awful. you would, yeah, you would think Billy Porter would, cause he's, he's more of a, one of the well-known actors. Well, at least the known actors, you know? And so mm-hmm. it's wild to think that even he is struggling that much that he has to sell his house. That's what surprised me too, because like you just said, I, I know who he is. He's been definitely, walking the, the red carpets he's been yeah. in the things and i'm like wow okay and that also that shatters that misconception people might have that yeah. these actors are rich and famous or not rich and famous but they're famous but they may not be rich they or they be rich well yeah, and it's like just... it's wild I, I heard i forget who where i saw it from but it was a someone um who kind of broke down what actors you know what they do with their money so it sound it may sound like they get a lot of money up front like i don't know i can't even remember the because it sounded like a lot i was like you you broke and you make that out of a movie but it's mm, like mm-hmm. when you think about it they have to you know pay the guild or pay 
their agent, they have to pay their, um, you know, so many pieces of that pie automatically gets divided out into other, to other people. And if they don't mm-hmm. make movies every other month, which most of them don't, that money goes pretty quickly. And right. it's, that's part of the business. That's part of what they do, you know, is they have to divide their money. They have to have a team essentially. And they have, they have to pay those people. They have to pay their dues. And it's, it's sad that, that they then probably don't have enough money to not have to work, you know, a second, third job. But Mm. see, that's, that is kind of the plight of a good portion of America as we, as we speak. So Mm. it's, it's just interesting to see it in on a, I guess, a more public stage, pun intended. Mm. But um, <laughs> it's just it's interesting to to see that. Sad to see that. It is, it is interesting. It's it's both, yeah, sad and interesting, and just like an eye opener. And one of yeah. the best ways I've seen or someone talked about it is it's the like one of the original gig, uh, not gig economy, but just like because it is a like that's what a lot of people are doing now just to make like maybe supplemental income where they would do DoorDash or Uber eats Mm -hmm. or whatever. It's Mm -hmm. the same thing with acting and even, even Mm -hmm. writing, especially because you Mm -hmm. might get the gig to write for a show, but they won't pay you only so much or they. Yeah. Right. And if the show is not picked up, then that's the whole thing that that's, you know, you may not get your money or all of your money or something like that. So it's, 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 it's wild. It is. It is. And to break down that paragraph that I read a little earlier, um, that whole thing about residuals, that's what a lot of like actors and writers can live on. Like if a show does really mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. back in the day before all the streaming mm-hmm. stuff happened. Yeah. So you got to think of people like the people that wrote for friends, the people who wrote for Seinfeld shows that have mm-hmm. long seasons, uh, have a long mm-hmm. tenure and they're being shown on repeat all the time on yeah. like TBS Still. or what it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Still. Didn't matter. Yeah. yeah. So that's why they need to come together with all these companies, all these streamers to mm-hmm. renegotiate these deals. So anytime you or I decides we want to watch Parks and Rec again, that yeah. they can get paid the for that. Get work. Paid for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the new shows, because yeah. that's that was the other thing. Uh, Orange is the new black, like they only got their real paycheck that first whatever they first signed the dotted line that was it all the residuals they got from that i think were like pennies so mm-hmm. if they get any i think they do get residuals but not much like it's very yeah. very little it's sad but we were going to move on wild. to happier things it is yeah. it is because <laughs> <laughs> i realized like oh man i feel like i'm bumming everyone out but I, it's important <laughs> to me so i wanted to talk about it yeah but yeah, we'll, we'll we'll move on to some other happier things, and I'm not really sure if this is well. I'll start with a story first because I did Ooh, have I like a stories. yes, I, I did have a happy moment prior to moving out of my apartment and where we lived. It was it was almost like a, a central area, like we were pretty close to a grocery store, pretty close to a park, uh, all these other amenities and things that we you know we're used to living by. Not so Mm -hmm. much now, although we do have a pretty good chicken place and a Jamaican place and Mm -hmm. there's a dollar general, but that's a whole nother story. We'll have to get into another time. (laughs) This is the story about me and it's a very, very, very short story, but I'm trying to get back home. I forget what, what is the rush? What's kind of happening here? But I wouldn't, I couldn't believe it, but there was traffic where there normally isn't. Because mm-hmm. there was a chicken crossing the road. Wow. I just wanted I just wanted to know why. And why the chicken was crossing the road? Yes. To get to the other side. Clearly, because I could Duh. not see I I don't even know where the chicken came from. Because I was like, why is there a chicken? Why is it crossing the road? And I'm like, oh, okay. Somewhere. <laughs> yeah, someone is laughing because they just let a chicken loose. I don't know. <laughs> and even now, like it's it's been weeks and I still haven't really set up a good joke for it because it feel <laughs> I feel like it wrote itself, but I couldn't find the yeah. punchline to it. Yeah. So, Bless. But that happened. So I I needed to share it. I needed to immortalize it here. <laughs> 
that that happened. And it was, thank you. It was a weird day that day in particular, but that just, that just capped it for me. I'm like, of course there's a chicken cross in the road. Where's <laughs> it going? I don't know. I just need to get home. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And there's a rooster yeah, in the neighborhood here where we live, but that's, yeah. Interesting. Yes. Do you have a follow up <laughs> on the chicken? I, well, well, I, you know, I'm not as surprised as you might think because I've had that same thing happen eerily, except I wasn't like driving. It was, it was in our, our neighborhood. Now we do have a, it's not a farm, but there's a house in our neighborhood that has, well, had a couple chickens, I think had a donkey, had a hmm. rooster, like had a goat. I mean, but it's not a farm. Had a goat. It's not a farm though, not officially, but they had all these different little livestock, little smaller, you know, livestock animals in, or I guess maybe just barn farm animals. I don't know the difference. Listen, it's been a, it's been a week today. So <laughs> do, do um, they have a barn then? Because where are the animals That's living? That's the thing. They're just kind of, the chickens were just kind of roaming. I swear to you, I heard a donkey. And I assumed it was somewhere on that property, but I never actually saw the donkey. So take that one with a grain of salt, but I know I heard it. And I for sure heard, you know, a rooster because we would hear it and not like in the mornings, what you would think, but I would hear it, you know, at three o'clock in the afternoon, just randomly, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. listen, I don't, I don't know. But I know I've no, I mean, chicken, so the I, I agree with you with the rooster because I, where I, when I lived with my parents, they did have, well, not my parents, but there was a rooster like a couple houses up and it would just, you know, preach all day, all night. Well, not all night because it, it did sleep. And I think someone might have killed it because after mm. a while I didn't hear it anymore. So I'm like, mm, mm. I don't know what happened. Yeah. But the rooster that's here, I know it starts at least 430 in the morning. And I know that Ooh. because Chief was sick recently. So I... I brought him outside to have some, you know, poo time, I suppose, just to kind of help clear out a system. And it was going off. Mm -hmm. The rooster, I mean, was just, you know, cock a doodle doodle in a way. And yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if it, if it, if it crows in the afternoon. I haven't heard it, but it might start to seep in the background. So I'm not even really paying attention to it anymore. So I'm going to, I'm going to take mm -hmm. note. I'm very, very curious about yeah. this house, though, that has all these these barn animals, though. I, listen, I don't know how they're getting away with it because we're in a residential neighborhood, but I, I I don't know. I mean, yes, I'm in Arkansas, but this is like sub the suburbs. This is not rural. Um, mm. What's that word? I don't listen. I don't want to say it again. <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> rural. <laughs> rural. Wait, rural. 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 Mm -hmm. Rural. Can you say juror? Can you say juror after? Juror. Juror. Same both together. That one's not as hard. Which words together? The rural juror. I'm not saying that. <laughs> you, you, just one you, time. You're baiting me. You're baiting just me. One, I'm not doing just, it. Just once. Rural juror. But there you go. See, that wasn't so bad. You just had to take a breath that and think about terrible. it. That's all. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Whatever. So now I guess we'll finally get into the 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 main event that had happened over our mm -hmm. uh, hiatus. And um, at first, I, I was really trying to determine what the title of this episode was going to be because of this story. And I'm thinking I might as well just take make it not necessarily original, but a little bit more personal to me. And I'm going to call it just the Alabama Slammer because that is my favorite cocktail. <laughs> Okay. And that is basically the move that happened out in uh, Alabama a couple uh, weeks ago at this point. Cinco de Augusto is uh, <laughs> the new holiday that we we do celebrate here in the black community. Yeah. And and uh, I guess I'll just give you the the rundown, which surprise, surprise to me is now a Wikipedia entry. I mean, of course, it should be. <laughs> yeah. And I will read it to you. I will nice. take a few editorial liber liber liberties <laughs> mm -hmm. and I will. Uh, yes. So here we go. Mm -hmm. 
The brawl ensued after a dispute over a dockside parking spot at Riverfront Park. I'm sorry, this is in Montgomery, Alabama. Just a mm-hmm. yeah, just a if you don't know what we're talking about. If if you don't know what has happened, I'm going to tell you now. And also where you've been. <laughs> yeah, exactly where you've been. The Harriet 2 riverboat, which I had actually been calling it the Harriet Tubman, might as well. But the Harriet yeah. 2 riverboat carrying 227 passengers attempted to dock in its reserved spot, but found a private pontoon boat occupying it. The nerve, the caucasity. Um, despite <laughs> multiple attempts by the riverboat's captain to reach out to the pontoon's operators, their requests were met with rude gestures and verbal abuses. Racism. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not Racism. that's implied. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. It's it's true though. We gotta explicitly state that. Correct. Correct. These are our editorial facts. Uh, mm-hmm. Editorial. Yeah, they're editorial facts. Yeah, that's that's what we're calling. Yeah. It. The co-captain of the Harriet Two Tubman was transported to the dock to negotiate with the private boat operators. The co-pilot provided a written statement to police in which he admitted untying a pontoon boat from the dock and moving it. The co-pilot explained he was then confronted by the boat owners. Video of the incident shows individuals arguing with the co-pilot. A short time later, co-pilot was assaulted by multiple members of the private boat who were all white. Um, Fellow Harriet Tubman, too. White, H W H I T E, white. Um, <laughs> the fellow crew members intervened in the co captain's defense. The brawl ensued with various individuals becoming involved. I'm going to stop but also rewind because before said brawl really got down, the co captain threw up a signal that is now infamous, infamous. with everyone. Infamous. Just take off your hat throw it in the air and like, Hey, I need help. Or a, it's about to go down. It's about to go down and B I'm going to need some help. I need some backup yeah. because it was yeah. what? Four on four on one. It was four that's, on one at that time. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's straight up jumping. And that's, that is yeah, frowned upon. Women, yeah. In yeah. most communities, in most communities, especially the black community, but in most communities being jumped, is frowned upon it is just not right and then don't let you be a white because then well the following has happened the entire altercation was caught on video showing it evolving from the initial confrontation to a vast melee a teenager was filmed swimming across the river to join the brawl while another man was later Mm -hmm. videotaped well a pause there because that was aquaman as we affectionately have Yes, Maine. There you go. Yeah. It officially dubbed mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can hear the Avengers music playing in the background. I would do it in post, but I don't want to get demonetized, even though we're not monetized yet. But still, um, <laughs> while another man was later. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Put that in your, in your mind, uh, your mind palace. So uh, <laughs> while another man was later videotaped hitting people with a folding chair and. Uh, pe- uh, police arrived at the scene around 7, 18 p.m. This doesn't actually say when it started, but it doesn't matter. Shortly after the brawl began. Well, that's probably why, because it happened so quickly. But in my mind, it, it seems like it was like, I don't know, a half an hour long. <laughs> it's because we're oh, seeing all the footage seemed, from all the different. Yeah. And so many different angles. It seems like at least half an hour long. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll read this last bit here. Uh, the assailants were white and defenders predominantly black, leading to allegations black. that the ass- assailants were racially motivated mm-hmm. in their attack. The captain in the incident was also white. So, or I think he was a regular white. So just he was white because he was, he was working with, with us. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he was hey, on the right side of history. Out. He was on the right yeah. side. So he's just white. If you if you are working against us, then that's where the extra H comes in for hate. <sighs> Sorry, I'm gonna calm down. But <laughs> um, yeah, the video of the brawl quickly went viral, drawing national attention and sparking discussions on race relations in Montgomery, mm-hmm. a- as well as memes galore and memes galore, laughs and and um entertainment galore is what you mean, inter- right? I, I do. I do. That's entertainment galore, 
merchandise. That's the word I was looking for. Merchandise galore. Because people, yeah. I mean, it's America. Capitalism. People took a screenshot and maybe made it look like, not like a painting, but like a, <laughs> some kind of drawing. Plastered uh-huh. that on a shirt. That was available on so, Sunday. This took place on Saturday. Right. right. <laughs> but then had it printed and ready to be ready to take pictures in to post on Sunday. That's the wild right. part about it. Y'all move, You're right. move quick. Quick like. Quick. I love that. And I love a, it. So and much. a friend of mine had posted the hat that she received that has a folding <laughs> chair on it. I mean, uh, say less. Say less. Say less. Give me one. <laughs> it's so great. So the, it 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 was a joyous time because, and there are reasons. I I don't really feel like getting into the nitty gritty of it, but I mean, if if you don't understand, you, you don't know. I mean, it's a racially charged city already, like racially charged history. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that this was happening, it just meant like, hey, it's 2023. We're not going to take it anymore. So. Yeah. I'm going to need you to get all the way off my back and take some of this too, because mm-hmm. you could have just let the man do his job, but you don't want to do that. And instead you want to fight him yeah. and we're not going to have that. No, no. Nope. So just, just should have moved your boat. That's all. That's all. And this could have been nothing, you know? Right. Now, as often as I've seen a lot of the footage and a lot of the edits, I still haven't seen because I've there are reports that someone was pushed into the water. I did not see anyone in the water unless I missed it because so much has happened. I did. Yeah. And but I mean, there was like really just three for me, three main points, like three is is the hat throw, the signal, bat signal, Mm -hmm. the Aquaman Mm -hmm. getting there. And threw him down, by the mm-hmm. way, too, because some of the footage yeah. they showed him just like, like that's a WWE move. I don't even watch the WWE, <laughs> so <laughs> he was he came ready. And then the other one, of course, is Uncle with the chair, and yeah, yeah, and and Ashley, yeah. I did. She watched it and she was fine with all of it up until like <laughs> he, he hit the the woman with the chair because I guess she yeah. was already down, like. It's like he didn't have to do that, and it's like it's true, and I felt bad for laughing at some of the memes that they they came out with that one because it was they had it timed to the beat perfectly, and I'm like, oh no, this is <laughs> that was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it was it was a beautiful moment, uh, mainly because this was a prime example of you know karma having very swift action by the hands of our people and it's one of those things where you literally somebody who did wrong Mm -hmm. um had to pay the price for that Mm -hmm. and you know hate it or hate it or love it the method may not be for you or whatever but it was still very refreshing to see that you know there were people who were standing up for their own standing up for what was right and for justice to be served because we don't see that very often we don't see that often enough you know yes and that's i think that's why so many of us really kind of enjoyed it and i'll I'll speak for me i do not condone violence but this Mm -hmm. this felt righteous like a righteous violence like it was yeah it was a righteous thing Mm -hmm. it was defending like hey we saw you picking on this man or Mm -hmm. fighting this man and yeah no we're not we're not standing for that and i i love that i'm glad that i'm glad that that was captured so many times i'm glad Mm. that uh because i mean if you if you think about it what happens when there's not video evidence and people are not live streaming Mm -hmm. in ways that you can't you know you can't edit it because it's being live streamed so it's like it, it just not a great situation that turned out to be depending on your viewpoint, maybe not so great a situation, but at least the folks who were causing all the, the harm and all the trouble got what came, got what was coming to them. You know, mm-hmm. they right. did, were not able to just shirk um, the law or shirk the right thing to do. And um, 
people stood up for one another, which is just that's that's beautiful to me. It is. It is. And I that's, I think, what the first part about it that I really loved about it. And then the second part was just us as a community just reacting to it and just Mm -hmm. it's like something for once that we all kind of had in common that were like, Mm -hmm. yes, we're, we're seeing this black man be uh, just vindicated or validated. I Mm -hmm. I keep forgetting the difference between those two words, but being defended, vindicated. Yeah. Vindicated. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And not being, you know, not taking it from, from the white man. And uh, also 20 points to you because you use uh, shirk twice. So that's why you get 20 points. Yeah. It's just such a strong, just, yeah. It's a good word. Yeah. I know how to fight with my words, you know? And, oh yeah, of course. And and I and that was and I guess that's part of what I'm so excited to about with the community coming together, not just with the memes, but a lot of it with the memes and the video, the TikTok reactions, the commentary that was just so expertly done, even in real time too. The ones I think you might have showed me that one for someone from who was ever doing it live from Facebook. But all of the at least two gospel inspired songs came of this i mean <laughs> I, haven't seen, I haven't heard yet oh, no. okay i'll have to i'll have to try and track them down and send them to you because i've seen at least two of them and, and i mean the, the people i mean this is why and we said this to each other i'm sure and i've said it in my chat groups but i love us like us black yeah. folk i just love us our creativity our how we other people kept saying how unserious we are because yeah you see this, some people might see as like, oh, wow, this is a terrible thing that happened. I'm like, be that as it may, we're still going to find a way to laugh and just mm-hmm. make yeah, the, make the most it. of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's that's really what I love most about what came of all of this is how we yeah. are, are just how we just take it. I'm like, yeah, we yeah, we take it and flip it and make it like I feel like Missy Elliott for a second. Sorry. Um <laughs> it's but it's great and and i probably will at some point try to incorporate something in my store and i i told you before the show i'm like i'll probably have to make a a t-shirt with just a chair on it a folding chair because uh and if you know you know yeah and i still may do that and i'm like oh man and i was googling it earlier and i already saw that happening but my chair i think would just be just a chair and i might do the 3d effect that i have for the microphone the headphones and the um oh my god what's the other one turntable i think which gives me such joyous memories because way back when courtney if you if you remember it take a, a little mind journey with me to baltimore i think it was mm-hmm. 2018 whatever um that sounds right i think it was 2018 was. yeah and the fact that i was wearing that shirt and someone recognized me not necessarily because of the shirt but just yeah. the fact that I was recognized, I'm like, someone knows me. So it was just so <laughs> weird. Like I, so surreal. Yeah. But remembered what I was wearing that day. So yeah. Nice. Random memory. <laughs> A good one though. That had, oh yeah, absolutely. And that has nothing to do with everything we've been discussing. And we are going to move on to our next segment, which is related. I'm just having trying to find my soundboard. There it is. Black history. Black history. Black history. Black history. Facts. Yes, today's Black History fact is brought to you by Alabama Slammer. And our fact <laughs> today is Nathaniel Alexander who was the inventor of the folding chair in 1911. Had it patented nice. too. Invented it for. Uh, church services and schools so they have a place to sit and pick it up and move it on then you know that was also some of the most funniest videos i've seen where people were like (laughs) training with chairs or having them like hooked to their pants like it's it's their piece now like this is you know how i'm moving in the streets because you're right i got i got that thing on my hip so right Love it. Love it. And just just hilarious people. So shout out to all of them. I would link to all of them, but there are way too many. So no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna. You, you can find it. <laughs> yeah, it's out there for uh, free. <laughs> it's out there. It's out there. Um so yeah, we will move on. And actually, you know, because I don't have a good segue for it, because okay, I do, I do. Let me work it in. 
So we saw, you know, black folk just standing up for what's right and and these white folk just not acting right. But there's still yeah. some more white folks just being white. <laughs> I'm just wondering how all mm-hmm. that's going to come out in the uh, transcript, if it's going to put those H's in there for me. It better. Anyway. If not, we need I, to teach it. Yes, yes. I mean, if AI is going to take over, at least do some things right. Get right. But yeah. Oh, so with all that said, we're going to go to space or rather someone wants to go to space. Space. My timing was a little off, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I just wrote down the headline. Uh, let me try to get a little bit more context here for you before I even tell you, because what I really want to do, I just want to get your your first initial opinion or your reaction. And that headline is, oops, hold on, suspense, a little bit of a drum roll. No, and okay, whoops, right there. All right, there we go. OceanGate co-founder, not, not the one who passed away from thinking he could build his own submarine, but his co-founder or partner, I guess. Mm-hmm. wants to send 1000 people to a floating colony on Venus by 2020 uh by 2050. Uh what? <laughs> and why? And who? And huh? <laughs> yes, um like he knows that there is issues with his with, like what? <laughs> there's several issues, correct. The first for me when I read this now, okay. So let me back up. I don't know if this guy's actually white or not. Let me see if I can grab a picture of him just so I'm not assuming, but I mean, this is, this is just white activity. Really? It's that's what I the was hubris, say. The, the hubris. hubris. Yes. Cause I mean, that's what the same guy who actually went down to, you know, the hubris he had. Okay. This mm-hmm. doesn't look like a white man. Oh yeah. Yeah. Maybe he is. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, my first issue right off the bat, like, like, do you do you know about Venus at all as a planet? Like, it's it's not the habitable? least hus- number huh? one. Is it not habitable? One first of all, absolutely. That's like the first thing. Like you, <laughs> I can't even start with like a floating colony because we don't even have that technology to do that here, right? Right. Let, let alone trying to build one or send one to the least habitable planet, habitable. I want to say most habitable or least habitable, but I'm not really sure about Jupiter. I feel like that's worse, but it's, it's also there, yeah. it's much farther away. So, yeah, I mean, why don't you go with the easier stuff like like Elon Musk is doing? He's trying to get to Mars like Mars is kind of doable. Like it's much more realistic. It's much, yeah, yeah, sort of. I think there's yeah. still problems, but at least it's. But also, we can reach Mars. I, and Venus, where's Venus? Don't don't judge me, but where's Venus? Venus is like the it's next stop two, towards yeah. the sun. Yeah, it's number two. Yeah, yeah. So what? <laughs> um, maybe maybe that's not a good idea because it's real close to that sun there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know. And I don't know Venus? Like, why, where... why not go the opposite direction? I don't know. Let's hit the moon first or something. Right. Like that would be even easier because I mean it's it's right there. It's much more obtainable. And yeah. we can come back, we can go and forth. Like that that'd be a more hopefully you're working with someone who knows how to build a rocket. Because Exactly. That's rule number yeah, one. <laughs> rule number one. Have it certified and tested, let alone you trying right. to bring a thousand people to wherever this is right yeah i still just can't get over the fact that he wants to go to venus and i'm like have you not read a book about venus and how terrible just i know you said floating colony but is it floating above the atmosphere so are you maybe just orbiting venus is that what you prefer like maybe why venus why Why just to say that you can do it like there's I was going to say there's so many questions, but here we are asking them. So that kind of, I, I just can't. Uh. 
I mean, I think it's probably because it's so it hasn't been done before and maybe it's a it's the novel part of it uh, you know i want to be the first never done it but that's that's dumb there's a reason why it's never been done mm-hmm. also you did also you build machines that kill people so what this doesn't look good it's not it's not a good look and it is it's not just a another look. person going off to their death basically because that's <sighs> Okay, so there is a a little bit more here than the first article I read. Let's see. The outlet reported that the 57-year-old Argentine-born businessman, so he Mm -hmm. may not be full white, but he looks it. Um, He he of that nature, though. Yes, yes. I I also have another, like, video I'm going to have to send you later, which is kind of related, not necessarily to this, but just the whiteness of it all. Um, (laughs) But yeah, he pointed to findings by NASA that that say there's a silver, no, a sliver of the Venetian atmosphere about 30 miles from the surface where humans could theoretically survive. So he envisions creating a floating colony that could withstand the sulfuric acids. That's a, I don't know, giant red flag for me. In Venus's clouds, just one element of the planet's atmosphere that makes it uninhabitable to humans. No, 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 no. Um, it's just going to be just, a no for me, you know, just, yeah. just no. <laughs> he failed to address how this proposed space station for as many as a thousand colonists would handle the 224 mile per hour hurricane force winds that are so <laughs> characteristic of Venus, according to NASA. So, mm-hmm. but no, nope, he goes know. on to say it's, it's very aspirational, but I think it's also very doable by, 20, by 2050. So mm-hmm. in 27 years, would we'll you, have the technology to do that. Would you go to Venus with this person or like with their craft? Would you do it? You. Me. You. Sterling. You, T. Sterling Watson. T. Sterling Watson. You. Would you do it? No, absolutely not. I will not pass go i will not collect two hundred dollars i will not go to venus i will not eat it with (laughs) cheese i will not eat it on a plane i will not go to venus okay now is it just because you don't want to go to venus or is it this 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 enterprise this person tell the truth um it's because i don't want to go to venus like at all i don't want to go with this man i don't know who this man is i don't know who (laughs) in his weird like trash can of a ship i don't know i don't know how i was getting there but it's it might as well be it don't matter yeah it's gonna be flown with a uh a ps2 controller and i don't want to go no Mm -hmm. duct tape um some carbon fire fiber yarn or something whatever to keep it (laughs) safe and a plastic window that we can look out of but no i don't want to no thank you (laughs) i will stay here on earth yeah, it's safe here. Safer here, just, here maybe yeah. it's not safe, but you know. No, I mean the world is burning, but I would rather stay here because I'm comfortable here. Like I know, like yeah. as a tree, I can breathe know, here for now. Mm-hmm. We know the the hellscape that we're in. We don't know right. the hellscape that is space that we know is trying to kill us. So, right, uh, right. It's like, a no brainer for me. Better the hell you know than the hell you don't. I know that's not the, how the yeah, phrase goes, but it's something like that, though. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I'm I'm thinking of the movie Event Horizon, which is a terrifying movie, and it has nothing yeah. to do with going to Venus, but it has everything to do with going to space and dealing with mm-hmm. things you shouldn't deal with yeah. because it's space and it's trying to kill you. I want to watch that movie so bad, but I know that it's horrifying. And I love myself enough not to do that to myself, but I want to see it so bad. The only way I was able to watch it was when um, it was during Saturday Night Sci-Fi, back when Twitter mm-hmm. was cool, and mm-hmm. um, and it was still Twitter. Back when so, Twitter was Twitter, yeah. Right, right, and the kids don't know. And then we had uh, we had stars back then when we liked to tweet. So yeah, it was. Um, It was a happier time. But no, I was able to watch that movie. A blue time. Yeah. I was able to watch that movie with people, with friends. So they were able to like kind of make jokes and make it less so scary and creepy. 
because we oh. had the, the we had the VHS in our house, but I was too afraid to watch it. So yeah, yeah, I was terrified. So I think I didn't. I've never. That was either before I got into Saturday Night Sci-Fi, which I really do miss, but and I think they still do it, but it's it's different. I don't know, but um, <laughs> it is different. I I feel like um, I what am I trying to say? I think that happened after, or rather, before I got into it, maybe. Um, it happened after, because I remember telling oh, you about it. Okay. Yeah, and oh, okay. you, I think, had plans. You're being social or something out with people and friends <laughs> in real life, and I'm like, oh, okay, whatever, fine. So, in hindsight, I, I, think I am I'm... kind of glad I didn't see it though. <laughs> well, because I know like it's I one mean... of those movies. I feel like it's one of those ones that sticks with you and not in a good way. Like I heard, I read some of the things that happened in that movie. And it stuck with me and I didn't even watch it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I I remember these, these are things that like made you and I bond because this is how we would get through a lot of movies that we were too afraid to see. Mm -hmm. And we would read about them like on Wikipedia. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. that guy was killed with a wrench, like just flew out of nowhere. So, yeah, I don't need to see that. But now I read it and the image is now in my head mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm still terrified and, um not gonna sleep yeah. well tonight yeah right it's a right, vicious right. cycle of being a weenie but loving mm -hmm. horror stuff anyway it's just it's, not fair. it's it's not fair it's not right i'm still messed up with hereditary a movie i've never watched but it still <laughs> lingers yeah so. i haven't read the mm. description for hereditary i won't i won't allow myself to do that <laughs> to myself like you love yourself too much to allow I that love myself into your, yeah yeah mm -hmm. into my heart yeah. and into my mind because i know it's gonna sit there and grow and then i'm gonna have to watch it and then that's just bad the show the podcast that you uh recommended to me um what's it called um where somebody like scared cats who don't want to watch the movie but they want to know what happened their friend will watch it oh. and like recap it What's that's that's Birdo. Birdo recommended that to us. Uh, Too oh, scary okay. didn't watch. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I listened to a couple <laughs> of podcasts and then had to stop because the recaps were too scary. <laughs> so this is this is it's me. It's me who we're talking about. And listen, mm -hmm. I'm a certified weenie, and that's fine. I I own up to it. It's it's okay. But oh my goodness. I just I just would like to enjoy some things that are scary. I still I want to be in my I, I, I in your wheelhouse, yes. I, I but I still I want to be a guest on their show and mm -hmm. hopefully well the both of us. So I can be the one to tell you about a certain movie or even a TV show that I've watched that you refuse to. So at least that way mm -hmm. you can live or watch it vicariously through me. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. there are there are a number of, a number of things that I've watched. I think you've come around to certain things. I think you have seen Nope, at least, right? I have, yes. Y yes, Wait, yes, because we did a whole episode time, about actually. it. Yeah. Yep. So we did Nope, but like you still haven't watched um some uh, of his other yeah us. You haven't seen us seen or us. I haven't seen what's the first one? Uh, Get Out. That's it. Get Out. Get Out. I haven't seen it. I. Mm -hmm. You know, which I don't I even just, years later, years later, it's <laughs> it's not scary at all. I believe that. I mm -hmm. yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> like there I might be like one saying. jump scare, but like that's that's but something that happens. It, probably. Well, it, yeah, it happens much much later in the movie. Like it's just it just happens. Like oh wow, that thing almost fell on him. But that was that was it. Yeah, it's more so one of those psychological kind of things, but not in a scary like, "Ooh, I'm gonna get you" kind of way, or things yeah. that will haunt your dreams later. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I no. hear the yeah. words that are coming out of your mouth, but mm -hmm. <sighs> like Event Horizon, like Event Horizon is definitely on that scale of like, like, "Ooh, that was creepy." Like it, it at points yeah. has nothing to do with space. It's just the evils that you can come up with on how to kill someone. So that's kind of like where it kind of 
lives, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. It's got the a, a strong creepy factor. And yeah, I think somebody actually does get sucked out into space. So they, you know, die a space death. But still, other than that, <laughs> it's. Yeah, I think it just turns into, you know, uh, your old, old school killer, like stab, stab or whatever. I don't know that it, it's <laughs> it's not pleasant. Yeah, I'm just going to not watch it and I'm going to understand that I am a um, weenie. Can't do it. Mm-hmm. And it's fine. I'll, I'll let y'all have it. OK, well, for the record, just to kind of follow up i have no plans nor do i have any desires to join the human to venus project which is what this is being called i do not want to go to mars i have no interest no desire i have no desire Mm -hmm. to go to the moon um Mm -hmm. i'm thinking if i ever really want to go to space at all but even that sometimes i'm like yeah you know what i I feel Mm -mm. i want to stay grounded and i feel like that's a, a segue to something else that we can talk about but i'm not, not quite yet so i, I want to stay here on earth so i'm mm-hmm. good i'm good yes now do, that's me but do you want to travel to anywhere that i've mentioned in space negative i i'm good here i'm i'm okay no thank you y'all can have it I'm going to jump in. I'm just going to stay on Earth. I will say there's only one exception. And if that is, if a TARDIS exists, I think that's the only way I will travel in space. Are you still going to stay on Earth? Um, I am not sure. Uh, I like to think I would go, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know if if David Tennant come, you know jumps out of a target. I had a feeling. I had a feeling know, it, it, it would have to be da- it, it would have, have to be David Tennant. It'd have to be him or um even Chris Eccleston. I'll take him too. Hmm. Okay. He's a nice doctor. Mhm. And I love him. Yeah. Tennant is the best though. So I agree. You know. I agree. As I often say, and our our good friend, mutual friend Lori will get mad at me for saying this, but Matt Smith's Matt Smith's face weirds me out a little bit. I'm not quite sure what it is, like his maybe sunken eyes or I don't know. I don't know what it is, but just putting that out there. Have you looked yeah, at his face? A, you... um, yes, I've looked at his face. He's got a very <laughs> um specific weirdness that works but it is very it's a little off-putting at first until you mm-hmm. get used to it and it's like okay he's he's a cool he's a cool dude he's fine he's a, but he's yeah, a human, like a person like just... he's he's a person it's it's okay but he's perfect for the doctor he is a great doctor so hmm. i don't know i'm, I'm still doctor, struggling to get you know and well yeah it's not mine either but i'm i'm still struggling to get ashley aboard because I, I I keep trying to either go with the tenant episodes, but they look too cheesy and cheap for her. And then I'll go oh, fast so forward good, to though. the. It is good. I know. I know this. I try to fast forward to the uh, Capaldi episodes, and I because I like him. He's cool. Mm-hmm. I know he's grouchy, but you know he's he's whatever. And I'm trying to fast forward so I can get to the current Doctor. So it's. A struggle because I don't know where to go or or what to watch and how to watch it with her without her grumbling like I don't want to watch this so I don't know yet I'm figure that out. Yeah, good luck because I know I know <laughs> Doctor Who's not for everybody, but it it mm, you do have to get past a few cringe um, seasons or mm, series mm-hmm. as the Brits call it. Right, because yeah. they're British you, you over there. Gotta, they're different. Yeah, they're British and different. So you got to get past it. But once you do, oh, the whole world opens up for you. The whole universe. Mm-hmm, but it is mm-hmm. a little cringe. So I get it. But yeah, you know. I'll be I'll be happy. I'll take the win. I did get her aboard Star Trek, so we can nice. traverse that universe. So it's yeah. not so bad. Well, that is a win. That, in fact, mm-hmm. is a win. Oh, yeah. I may traverse yeah. space 
if I was on one of those particular spaceships, I guess. It, mm-hmm. I didn't want to call it aircraft, even though they do. <laughs> they do come to Earth, but mm-hmm. they're, they're, it's a spaceship, whatever. Um, yeah. Spaceship, yeah. Yeah. Um, we're going to move on because that I, I didn't mean to spend so much time with Ocean, or not Ocean Gate, human to Venus. Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just needed to get it out, the frustration. That's, yeah. You don't know about space, do you? What's wrong with you? Okay. What did I have next on here? Um, all right. I guess we'll just go ahead to our moment of gratefulness. And I'll just go ahead and, and jump in here and say that I am exuberantly grateful and I cannot thank them enough. My family, uh, that's Dame, that's Mittery, my mom, my dad, for helping with the move, with uh, the packing or the su- the supplication of boxes or supplying of boxes and and labor <laughs> of carrying said boxes to and fro up and down mm-hmm. stairs. And mm-hmm. um, I also thank our, our good friend, Jonathan, who is like Kendrick's best friend's father so he ah. was a, a huge help one of the major unloading of boxes took place in the middle of a rainstorm like oh, it wow. was pouring pouring like pouring with capital and italicized letters pouring so mm-hmm. he beasted those boxes i mean he just took them just threw them up i was i was already beat because i had already taken the first load so like, like he came through and I'm so grateful for him. Uh, grateful for my good friend, Rome. We didn't really help too much in the uh, transport, but he did recommend the moving company that we used. And he also helped me put my bed together. So that was a great help. But the moving company, big kudos to them. So this is a little bit of a plug or a little bit of not an ad because I'm not getting paid for it. I'm just saying I'm really grateful for two brothers moving company. I don't know if they work. All across the country, I feel like I want to say no, they are based here in Connecticut. So I don't want to say like, hey, I live out in Missouri. Can they come? I don't know. It'd probably be very expensive if they did. But they were very great. They're very professional. They're very quick, very timely, very knowledgeable when it comes to how to move furniture. And again, I did mention earlier that my couch does not fit my living room. They did try. I tell this to other people who are like, hey, did you stand it on the side? Did you try tipping it around? Yes, we did. We tried the it all. Geogra- yeah, we, we tried it all. And while none of us majored in geography, I'm not sure why you would because it's shapes. <laughs> like you, once you know angles and whatnot, why, what more do you need to know? But we tried all the ways, but we realized between the hallway being as narrow as it is, and the way the doorway is angled, there was just no way to get this couch. It was just too long. Like you couldn't even stand mm-hmm. it on its side to try to, wow. you know, angle it in. So we tried everything. So that is why the couch is now in the kitchen. And apparently our landlord has a connection to someone who can now bear with me now. I know it sounds weird. I told this to somebody else and they just gave me this weird look, but like they know someone who can take the couch apart and then move the couch and then put it back together as if nothing ever happened to it. So move it where though? Hmm? Move where, where would they move it to? Oh, move it to the living room. Huh. Oh, because it can't like fit through the doorway, I guess. Yes. Yeah. So they will take it ah. apart so we can actually move it where we want to take it and then uh-huh. they'll put it back to put it back together. So it would be good. I see. So then I see. You, okay. Yeah, so then the only issue then would be to, um, whenever we move, have him come back to take it apart again so mm, we can yeah. take it out. <laughs> like, take it, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That, that, that'd that be interesting, but we'll we'll figure that out when the time comes and make sure we hold mm-hmm. on to his number so we can call him mm-hmm. back. I'm like, hey, can you take our couch apart again? <laughs> yeah. So that was, yeah. So I'm, I'm really grateful for the movers for all those people that have helped us mostly like my family. Oh, and my in-laws, of course, they, they definitely did help as well. And Mm -hmm. it was, it was quite the move and Mm -hmm. exhausting. So I do thank them next time. I hopefully I will have two brothers moving company come back 
they will take care of everything and I, I won't rent a U-Haul. I'll make sure they take care of the boxes so I don't have to lull those back and forth mm -hmm. up and down the stairs. They take mm -hmm. care of everything. So, because my goodness, that was exhausting. I've, yeah. Oh, and I had a fever that week too. I don't know if you knew. I did know. Yes. Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember. There was... It was a very hectic week. And I still went to work thinking like, oh, no, I'm fine. And I'm like, why am I freezing, though? But in, mm -hmm. in hindsight, I'm wondering if maybe we might have had COVID and didn't know. Because uh -oh. we didn't take a test. But yeah, we, sur we survived and everything's fine. I don't know. We, I just know we, we weren't we both weren't feeling well, but we just had to power through and like yeah. pack everything. We got to get out of here because, yeah, didn't want to stay anymore. Yeah. So. What are you grateful for today? I am grateful for. Um, I am grateful for a lot, actually. I'm just. I'm trying to. I'm trying to pick one, so I don't gush. But I'm. I'm grateful for. Like. It's going to sound very strange, but slower days at work. <laughs> okay. Because those are the days where I can kind of coast and hide a little bit and still work and, and not, but not expend too much energy and, and spend too much. Um, well, I guess energy is the best way to um, say it. Cause like if, when I'm not feeling well or there's a lot going on, and but I'm not, but I'm still at work. I need to be able to continue doing the work, but not uh, giving so much of myself. So I had that sort of day today. It was a little hectic at times, but for the most part, it was very slow, and I could just kind of take my time. And I'm just grateful for days like that when I can kind of catch my breath and still make money and still not like have to use time but still not have to put a lot of a lot of energy to do that. So I don't know. I guess just days like this to help uh, my energy flow a little bit better. Mm -hmm. A little weird, but I'm grateful for days like that. Yeah, slow, slow work days are, are good days to have. Like it's sometimes you just need that downtime if, if there's like a whole lot of hustle and bustle and just like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to so hard to keep up. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to to take it easy. Technically, that's I've got a whole well, maybe not so much now, but at least a month or two of slowness at work because mm -hmm. there, let's see, basketball season was ended and football season has yet to begin. So in between, there's baseball, which really isn't much to talk about there. So it's mm -hmm. it's very quiet at work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of yeah. the regulars are, you know, on vacation or something. So it's, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. It's it's nice to have those slow days. Not every day. Though, yeah. Because, yeah. Ugh, Not every need, day, but need... today was needed and appreciated and welcomed. And ugh, thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. it's, next best thing would have been to not be there, but <laughs> you know, that's, that's not I my do. life I do. right now. So. I get it. I get it. And um, yeah, so I guess our next thing, and I've got a new sound for this one, is our recommendations or what I will call T-Rex. <laughs> I like and it. That was, yes, that was from one of, I want, I want to call it your favorite movie. I know it's not your favorite movie, but it's a movie you appreciate. But Jurassic Park. I do appreciate Jurassic Park. It's a great movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So <laughs> I, I took his uh, T-Rex roar because at first I was looking up what a T-Rex sounds like. And then they were giving me all these scientifically accurate T-Rexes and it was just roll, uh, low growls. And I'm like, I can't use this. Mm -hmm. I need something that, yeah. you know, says roar or something or roar. And just, yeah. yeah. And then I found... A Godzilla one, which I was going to use, and I was I would have been fine with that too because that really just kind of brings home a reptilian creature that roars at you. But 
uh, I thought, hey, let's go with an actual T-Rex because T, Sterling Watson, is recommending. And <laughs> this is going to be a continuation or a part. Mm-hmm. I'm just introdu- introducing this. This mm-hmm. What I'm going to recommend is the book, The Practice of Groundedness. And it's an amazing mm-hmm. piece of work that kind of really helped get me going like uh, this past month, really, with all these principles on helping you stay grounded in life when things get really chaotic and crazy. I l- personally literally recommended it to you, Courtney, and you recently finished mm-hmm. it. So that is why yep. we're going to come back another day to kind of talk about our feelings with it and really kind of, you know, take our time talking about it. Yeah. But it's a it's a really great book. Um, it does fall under under like self help and all of those things, and I don't know. It just it really helped me. I can't really sell it to you right now as much as I want to because I really want to dive into it. But it's mm-hmm. it, there's a lot to talk about. So for some less meaty <laughs> uh, recommendations, I'll, I'm going to throw out uh, the After Party season two, which is still currently airing. Like not all the episodes are out yet, but that's on Apple TV Plus or Apple TV, whatever it's called. Also, Hijack, which my parents recommended to me, and I've been watching it. I only got two episodes left. It's really, really good. And I almost Mm -hmm. couldn't even say really, really good. (laughs) But Mm -hmm. and the last thing I recommend is renovation television shows. Like I've never really been into those kind of like makeover homes kind of things. Mm -hmm. But Property Brothers ICU is what started it all. Ashley decided to watch this and like, Mm -hmm. hey. I like these people. And then Ugly's House in America, Windy City Rehab. And then there's one more that's on Netflix. I can't remember the name of it. I think it's, um, oh my God, it's something about my tricking out my house or I can't remember what it is. I'll have to get back to you. But there's <laughs> these five people, five or four people who are basically redoing your house, but mm-hmm. they all have different personalities that they're bringing to it. And I'm like, you only really need two of these people here because these other two people, they're they're weird and, and not helpful <laughs> in my opinion, but whatever. It was fun and low stress TV, which is what we needed. Yeah. So those are my recommendations, mostly practice of groundedness, but we'll get back into that later. What would you recommend today? Um, I was thinking about it. I, I've not been consuming a lot of media um, that I can recommend. I've been like waist deep in a course, like a, a writing course. So that's what I've been doing. Um, but I would have to also recommend the practice of groundedness because I remember when you first um, recommended it to me, you recommend a lot of stuff. And I was like, mm. okay, yeah, I'll get, I'll get to it later. But I, but I did start it and I didn't expect that to get much out of it. I do like a good self-help book, but I was just like, eh, this stuff is so basic. I don't need it. But because it was so basic and so simple, it it made sense. And I really did get a lot out of it. And it was a very easy read. It was a pretty, you know, relatively quick read. And it was just very um, good. I did get a lot out of it. There are a lot of practical things, which is, mm, which is really mm-hmm. important. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. I I do think it'll be one of my like a book that's in just in rotation. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I I'm gonna have to piggyback. I'm gonna have to piggyback and also recommend that book. Okay, I'll allow it this time. This time, uh, but but we will definitely come back and talk more about it because, like I said, there's and you're right. It is pretty simple. But the way that it's broken down to do what, you know, he's telling you to do, how to be grounded, it's it's great. And it's stuff we should talk about and other people, I think, would benefit knowing. But that's all our recommendations. Do you have any shout outs or do you want to be found anywhere? Are you just chilling in the background? I'm just chilling in the background, you know? Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm I know, good. I know. <laughs> All of a sudden, your voice changed. Like it just sounds different. I'm so sorry. I'm having no, no, in a good uh, way. headphone issues. Difficult. But yes, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, very well. Well, you can find me at all things at Indube at Indube dot com. Um, you can. Wow, it's been so long. I don't remember how any of this goes. But yeah, just find us on all the things at at Indube. Search Indube. Tell your friends. Tell your loved ones. 
Tell people that you value that you value them and live without regrets. Live for the folks you love. I've been your benevolent host, T. Sterling Watson. And remember, if the world didn't suck, we'd all fall off henceforth and forevermore. And the church said, Amen. Amen, indeed. Thank you so much for listening to the Indube Podcast. To get more Indube in your life, check out Indube.com, Patreon.com slash Indube, and of course, merch over at Public. Email us your Ask Indube questions, comments, or just say hi at IndubePod at gmail.com. Linky dinks in the descripts. Please rate, comment, follow, subscribe, and hashtag tell your friends. Until next time.